fellow brothers and sisters, the topic that I would like to share with all of you who have been a Muslim. We have two group of people today, maybe three. One is those who are new to Islam. We call themselves as reward. You have also the born Muslim, the majority who are here are born Muslims. Either you are from Somalia, Morocco, you are from Kurdistan or anywhere. You are all majority are born Muslim, the Pakistani, the Indian, Alhamdulillah. And you have among us, inshallah, people who are not yet Muslim. So we have three groups. Reward, because we return back to our fitrah. What the Prophet said, Kullu maulid yulad ala fitrah, fa'abawahu yahawidanihi, aw yunassiranihi, aw yumajjisani. Every child is born clean and pure. Whether it's a Chinese baby, Indian baby, white baby, black baby, Asian baby, Arab baby, Ajnabi baby, all baby are fitrah. If they die before they become Muslim, they have no sin in the sight of Allah. They are fitrah. It is the parent who will make them a disbeliever. It is the environment that will turn us against the truth. So we believe that all the brothers and sisters who are with, here, with us tonight, inshallah, we will try our level best to understand the spirit of this religion. Islam is a religion of peace. Islam is a religion of love. And Islam is here to give every individual their rights. Before we talk about human rights, before we American, maybe before the European community talk about human rights, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have talked to us about hukukul insaniyah, the basic human rights that exist in Islam. Now, firstly, I would like to share with you the right, al-haqqul hayah, the first right. Haqqul hayah, the right to live. Nobody have the right to say, no. If, we give, if Allah gave us baby girl, there was a time. Yeah, if anybody in the time of the pagan, if you give a baby girl, it's better for you to bury them alive. It's better to bury the baby girl alive. As though as the girl has no right to live on this earth. In the time of Moses, you know, King Pharaoh gave a command that every newborn male must be killed. Have no right. But Islam came here to protect the right of every soul. Killing one soul is like killing whole mankind. This is called haqqul haya. To the extent that Allah asked us in the day of judgment, Allah said in the Quran, bi ayyizam bin qutilat. On what sin that the child have committed that they have no right to live, that they have to die? For what? And Allah said, وَلَا تَقْتُلُ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ Nobody has the right to kill any soul because every soul belongs to Allah. He is the owner of all souls except what Allah said is right. Because we belong to Almighty Allah who is the creator of all things and he is the only one who can take our life haqqul haya the right to survive number two haqqul karama Allah said walaqad karamna bani adam wa hamalnahum fil barri wal bahar wa razaqnahum minat tayyibat wa faddalnahum ala kathir min man khalaqna tabdila Allah said, we have honored the children of Adam, whether he is white, colored, whether he is an Arab, a non-Arab. Allah said, as long as he is the children of Adam, we have honored them. Karama. Walaqad karamna. Haqqul karama. The right to be honored, male or female, poor or rich. 
you have the right to be honored and Allah said indeed we have honored the children of Adam and all of us are children of Adam and the Prophet said قُلْ لُكُ مِنْ آدَمْ وَآدَمْ إِنْ تُرَابْ all of you are the descendant of Adam and Adam is from clay and what did Allah say after that وَلَقَدْ قَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ and we have provided for them transportation on land and on sea and we have provided for them all the bounties the risky that they need Allah is the provider he is the one who gives risk it's not you or me who gave provision to our children is Allah who have provided all this provision among all the creation of Allah we the last creation of Allah mankind is the best we are the best creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is called the second right haqqul karama you don't have the right to dishonor your wife even you don't like her even she is stupid sometimes <laughs> but not the wife here the girl say the sister here are not stupid i'm saying yeah sometimes you say what can i do my wife is stupid it's not that she becomes stupid she's stupid because you let her become stupid because you don't give her her right the third right haqqul ta'lim the right to seek knowledge that is her right she has the right to seek knowledge we know muslim seeking knowledge is a must it's an obligation upon every muslim so it's very wrong for the man to say you woman just stay at home you just cook for me become my slave no no they are the servant of Allah Kuluna ibad Allah they are just like us they are like our, they are my, our mothers to the extent that the prophet honor the right of the woman to say that if a father or a mother will summon you who should you respond first the prophet said your mother they ask again the prophet said mother they ask again what did the prophet said Alhamdulillah, see the boys, the men have acknowledged that mother, mother, mother. But he still insists. Ask again, then your father. Then we come in. <laughs> then only we come in. So we must not be too proud of ourselves. We are the fourth yeah, stage. We come only after the fourth then. Alhamdulillah. Now that is their right, Hakul Ta'lim, the third right. Yeah, the right to seek knowledge. And nobody can say, no, I'm going to the to the mosque. But my wife, no, no, she don't have to study. She just stay at home. No. If you can teach him or teach her what you have learned from the Imam, from the Sheikh, Alhamdulillah, she don't have to come. But majority of the husband have failed to teach their wives. Do you agree with us, sister? Yes. I don't hear you, sister. Yes. Uh, you see, they are here now. <laughs> I didn't say that. The sister is the one who confirmed that. But not the man here. The man here are good. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Maybe the man outside, outside, outside. <laughs> the men here alhamdulillah they are good brothers alhamdulillah you know they respect you highly alhamdulillah they give you a right that's why you are here tonight you know we are here together to seek the knowledge of allah the divine knowledge pure knowledge not man-made knowledge man-made knowledge is corrupted this is when you talk about knowledge you talk about what allah said and what the prophet sallallahu have said this is called pure knowledge it's not corrupted by anybody it's divine there is the wahyu and the saying of our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu now this is the third right haqqul ta'lim the right to seek knowledge that's why the woman have the right to go to the mosque so it's very wrong for anybody to stop the woman entering the mosque now but if you were asked 
which one is better for them to perform their prayer at home or in the mosque then the prophet said the best is at home because Islam always take care of the woman and the safety of the woman they get the same reward like how the man got their reward if they go to the mosque but if the lady choose to pray in their house they got the same reward like how the man got their reward performing their prayer in the mosque there's a difference and the fourth right we call hakul kasab hakul kasab system means you have the right to be paid do you know you have the right to be paid do you know that when you give birth to a baby and you decide to breastfeed the baby is your child too you have the right to ask some uh, some allowance from your husband <laughs> do you know that sister you don't know alhamdulillah so the brother you know you save a lot you know yeah. do you know that you have the right to ask because if you decide not to breastfeed the baby then what what the husband have to do the father have to do what have uh, what can, what must we do from there we must buy milk we're going to spend the milk may come all the way from new zealand or australia or maybe from here you know so they become uh, the children of Rada, <laughs> you know and what is who is their father who is their mother yeah. and then they said the father and mother is that Mr. Cow <laughs> yeah. you know that you have the right to do that you have that but if you do not ask for your right there is your sadaqah yeah there is your sadaqah you have the right because at that point of time you need it to have all the best food that you can have to make sure you produce all the best milk for your baby you need extra nutrition to your body and it's the right of the husband to give you that special allowance but if you prepare to give in for the sake of Allah we help each other for the sake of Allah then you will be given by Allah more reward than what your husband can offer the right to be paid do you know that if before you have a maid helping to clean your house you have a maid with you you can say to your darling husband my darling you know, I love you so much you know, I, I know that you love me too you know. do we love our wife brothers do we love our wife sister how many times the husband said to you I love you before married many times After marriage, we don't know what happened. You know. <laughs> the man is silent after marriage. You know. That's why they said, before we get married, you know, before I got married, normally we will, the man have a lot of story to tell. You know. <laughs> after marriage, the man have nothing to say. <laughs> we become a good listener. <laughs> when you talk to the man like you're talking to the wall, but not the man here, inshallah. Amen. The man here, good, alhamdulillah. When you love somebody, brother and sister, to be very true to all of you, you must express your love. Very, very important. Islam is a religion of love and peace. You must express your love. Do you want Allah to love you more today? Do you want Allah to love you more, brother? Do you want Allah to love you more, sister? Yes. yes, Alhamdulillah. We need Allah's love. Now what I want you to do, one simple matter. You look to your right now. You start from the right. Look to your right. All the brothers, look to the right. To your brothers who's in your right. The sister too. Say to them, I love you for the sake of Allah. Say to them. <laughs> Don't laugh, sister. Say, Allah Akbar. Now look to your life now. Say to them, I love you for the sake of Allah. Say that. 
Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And may Allah love all of you. Amin. Because the Prophet did say that if a person loves somebody for the sake of Allah, you must express a love. Don't do it only when he or she died. It's no point. It's too late. If you love your mom today, when you go back before you go to bed, talk to your mom. Salaamu alaikum, mom, mommy, daddy, I love you for the sake of Allah. Say it to them. Before it's too late, brothers and sisters. Alhamdulillah, Allah has loved us more tonight. Because we, from our heart, is telling our brothers and sisters, we love all of you for the sake of Allah. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, we are talking about the fourth right. Number one, haqqul hayat, the right to live. Number two, haqqul karama, the right to be honored. Number three, haqqul ta'lim, the right to seek knowledge. Number four, haqqul kasab, the right to be paid, to earn a living. Yeah. And number five, haqqul tamliq, the right to own properties. If you have some property that belong to you, my sisters, or the property you inherit from your parents, now the man down here married you, alhamdulillah. Remember, sister, they married you. They don't marry your property. <laughs> it's not said, what is yours is mine, what is mine is mine. No, no, no. <laughs> no. What is yours is yours. What is mine is mine. What is mine also is yours. Whatever the man has, some part of his property belongs to you. Even you are a working woman, but the man still has the basic responsibility to support you. That is your right. They can marry with you, but your property is yours. Do you know that, brother? Yes. Alhamdulillah. That's why before you get married, one of the rukun of marriage in Islam, the condition of marriage in Islam, you must give your woman the what? The mahar, the dowry. Even one cent is still a dowry. To honor her right to own something. And that dowry belongs to her, not belong to your parent. It is yours. To the extent the Prophet said, if you get married and you don't bring any cash with you. And the Qadi have no credit card machine. You cannot use credit card. You know? <laughs> but still you can get married. In our country, you know, the marriage form, they ask you, how much a dowry? 1,000 example. 1,000 euro. Okay. Cash or credit? They ask you. They will ask you cash or credit. So you still can get married if you forget to bring your money. But whatever you promise, you must give it. You cannot lie and cheat your wife. If you say 1,000, you must give to her 1,000. If not, the prophet said, your relationship as husband and wife is considered as zina. Is considered as zina. You cannot lie to them. This is just an example. Hakul tamlik, the right to own property. The gold that belongs to you is yours. Yeah. So you don't have the husband have no right to take it away from you until you allow it. That means with your reda, then you can no problem. Yeah. There is hakul. Tamlik. And then you have the six, number six, Hakul Ama, the right to work. The right to work, the right to do something that you must do as a Muslim. No husband can say to you, You must obey me. Now I don't like you to cover yourself. That is your right, your basic right. That is your Ama as a Mu'mina. Saliha, you should cover yourself Islamically. Now, if you have a career, you have certain knowledge, you want to be a teacher, you want to be a doctor, do you think you have the right to be a doctor, to work as a doctor, sister? That's your right because you have responsibility 
upon the knowledge that Allah has given you. People of knowledge, you cannot keep yourself silent. You must pass the knowledge to others. You cannot betray the knowledge that Allah gives you. But you are given a choice whether to do something indoor or to do something outdoor. The best job for the woman is always indoor. Because you have more blessing by doing things indoor. In the future, maybe your parents need you. Maybe your children need you more at home than just dollars and cents. A lot of people work for dunya thinking of dollar and cent. They all have dollar, they have common, they have no common sense. They don't take care about the feeling yeah, of what the children need from the father. They ignore the right of the wife towards the husband. They have no time. Everything is dunya, dunya, dunya. So you must remember, after you give them the right kasab, tamlik, hakul amal, they have the right yeah, to work. The last right that Allah has offered to all mankind, to all mankind, not only for Muslims, is hakul, what is the hak? You have the sixth one, hakul haya, hakul karama, hakul ta'lim, hakul kasab, hakul tamlik, hakul amal, and the last one is hakul hurriya, the right to choose, sisters. No parent have the right to force you to marry anybody except if you give the consent in Islam. You love your parent, your parents love you, but they have no right to force you to marry somebody that you do not like. You have the right to say to them, Dad, I'm sorry. You don't have to humiliate the third party, but you can tell your father, your mom, Mom, I'm sorry. No? I can't, I can't accept this. I'm not prepared for this. Because marriage is not a small thing. Yeah? Marriage is something that is very noble and you cannot force anybody. So if you are not prepared to accept anybody that was, that has been recommended by your parent, you cannot keep quiet, sisters. Don't keep quiet in the wrong time. Your silence means you approve. Now this is very dangerous. The Prophet said the silence from the girls means she agreed. Do you agree with that? Do you agree to marry somebody that you don't love? Do you need to like somebody to get married with him? Do you need to love him? How can you love him? <laughs> you cannot go courting. <laughs> How can you love him? Can, inshallah. You love him for the sake of Allah. The first thing that you must value is his deen. Whether he loves Allah or not. Whether he prays or not. Whether he worships Allah or not. Because there is more valuable than dollars and cents. Is their love towards Allah. If the husband or the future husband, the guy come to your house and the time of prayer is there and he pray. He'll go to be with, your, with your dad to go and perform prayer, alhamdulillah. And for the father, if you want to know which is the right yeah, future son-in-law, call him to visit you before prayer time. Before Zohar, invite him for lunch. And when Zohar come in, call him to call Azan in case you want to pray at home. Now prayer time can Can you pray? Uh, I'm sorry. You know? uh, I have some uh, you know, voice problem. Okay, okay. You can excuse him, alhamdulillah. Then you can call an azan, alhamdulillah. And then after that you say, please become an imam. Huh? Uh, you know, my, my address is not clean. You know? but, then you have some sarong, you have some thawb at home, give him one. From there you know that he is a practicing Muslim or he is just a Muslim by name. If he is a just traditional Muslim, he can still be your future-in-law. Make sure that he learn about this deen first.
Make sure that now he become a practicing Muslim. This is very important. It's not the color. It's not the car that he drive. But it is his deen, his akhlaq. And this is very important, brother and sister. Because the Prophet did warn us, it is a fitan. It is a fitan if you, as a father, as a mother, have brought up your children to be a righteous children. Al Mara, Al Muslimah, Al Salihah. A righteous Muslim daughter, a righteous Muslim girl. But you pass her to a man who don't believe in Allah, who don't even perform his prayer, or a man who had bad character. You know that, sisters, brothers? You cannot do that because it's an amana. It's an amana. How can you trust this man to take care of your daughters? And your daughter, Alhamdulillah, is a good daughter, faithful daughter to you. She had been a good Muslim. Huh? You pass her to a man who don't even allow her to wear her, her hijab after that. When she wants to pray, she says, no need to pray. You just pray once in a week, Friday. <laughs> be a Friday Muslim. You don't have to be an everyday Muslim. <laughs> there is extremists. Yeah, those who pray five times a day, they are extremists. Do you agree with that, brother? No. no. There is the minimum to be a practicing Muslim. Now, the haqqul hurriya, I come back to haqqul hurriya, the right to choose. Yeah, the right to decide. Even you get married, sister, do you know that you have the right to choose what kind of furniture that you want? Do you know that? You don't know? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. I hope the brother don't scold me today. <laughs> ah, why must he share? Inform all this to the sisters. Now we are going to have a lot of problems after tonight. <laughs> no, no, no. It's time for you to give them their right. You cannot be a zulm to them. You must remember the household is something that the sister is going to stay in. They are going to look at the furniture most of the time more than you. So let them have their right. Bring them along to all the shop and look at the furniture. Maybe they have the certain color that they don't like. You like blue, but they like pink. <laughs> you don't have any problem, pink, but they look, if you have blue all the stuff, and they are always in the house, look at blue, they got migraine. <laughs> when they have migraine, you have problem. <laughs> they cannot serve you. Yeah, they cannot be happy with you. You make them unhappy, they'll make you like hell. <laughs> you must remember, yeah. Woman is, is Allah's gift, actually. They can make you live like a king. Yeah? You can be a king if you make them happy. Just make them happy. <laughs> is that true, sister? Alhamdulillah. I didn't say that if they say that. Yeah. Just make them happy. They don't need diamond. Diamond is not forever. You agree with me, sister? Yeah. Tell the husband, I don't need diamond and gold. I just need you to respect me, to honor me, to love me, and treat me well. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So, brothers and sisters, if we honor the seven rights, and these seven rights belong to everyone, that's why we have no right to force anybody to accept Islam. La ikraha fid din, even religion, we cannot force. Yeah. We cannot force them. And that's why we must not only respect the right, only the Muslim, the right is all for all mankind and also for animals. Trees, the environment have right upon us. Even the road, the road that we are driving, they're walking, they have right upon us. Do you know? <inaudible> the Prophet said, be careful. Don't sit 
along the street, along the road. Why? Because the road has right upon you. Do you know, brothers? Alhamdulillah. What is their right? What is the right of the road to us? Yeah. You got to yeah, take care of your eyesight. You don't stare at everybody who walk in front of you. Now, if something is something bad is happening in front of you, you have the right to amal ma'ruf and nahi munkar. And if people will just walk in front of you and give you salam, salam alaikum, you must respond. If 100 people, salam alaikum, salam alaikum, salam, you must respond, alaikum salam 100 times. If not, better stay back. Don't sit behind or beside the street because the road has right upon you. You cannot just eat and then throw the rubbish on the road. Because the road has right upon you. You must keep the road clean. This is a certain thing that Islam always reminds the Muslim, but the Muslim have not been yeah, informed about these basic rights. Do you know that the not yet Muslim have right upon you, brothers? What is their right? Their right is to listen to the word of Allah. وَإِنْ أَحَدُ مِنَ مُشْرِكِينَ اسْتَجَارَ فَأَجِرْهُ حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ أَبْلِقْهُ مَقْمَنَ ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ قَوْمٌ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ If any, your neighbor or anyone who come to you, even they are not yet Muslim, they are mushrik, don't just leave them alone until you let them hear the word of Allah. Let them know what is Islam. But if they do not accept your da'wah, don't force them. But let them live in peace with you. Why? Because zalika bi annahum qawmun la ya'lamun. Because they are people who knows not about Islam. It is your duty, my duty, to convey the message of Allah to all mankind. It's our duty. And that's why we are here tonight. To remind ourselves that it's our main responsibility. It is very wrong for Muslims to keep Islam to themselves. It's a qiyana. You must spread the word of Allah. The Prophet said, send or convey the message from me even one ayah. Who is the one who gives hidayah? It's not me, it's not all of us. It's Allah who gives hidayah. وَمَا عَلَيْنَا إِلَّا الْبَلَقُ وَاللَّهُ يَحْدِي مَا يَشَاءُ Allah gives hidayah to whom He please. But it is our duty to convey the knowledge. Prophet Muhammad was appointed by Allah to convey his message to the people of Mecca, to the people of Medina, to the people of Ta'if. Alhamdulillah, because of the da'wah in 23 years. Now, whole Mecca, Medina, Ta'if, all are Muslim today. And do you know from, do you know Maldives? Do you know Maldives? Where is Maldives, brother? Maldives, the whole island belong to the not yet Muslim once upon a time. Because of one Moroccan brothers, one Moroccan brothers, migrate to Maldives with his family. One man, the whole Maldives became Muslim. Allah. Allah. Because the Muslim convey the message of Allah. Give their not yet Muslim their right to know who is Allah, what is Islam. Do you know that, brother and sister, that our neighbor have right upon us? We know that. Yeah, the Prophet have told us. Even Gabriel came to the Prophet, so many remind him about his right towards the neighbor. To the extent the Prophet said, Man kana yu'minu billah yawm al-akhir, fal yukrim jarah. Whoever believes in Allah and the here after, then he must honor. He must honor the right of his neighbor. Whether his neighbor is a Muslim or not yet Muslim. Remember, I use the term not yet Muslim because one day they become Muslim. Don't be judgmental. You are not Muslim. Who are you to judge them? When, my, when my, I was calling my family to Islam, when my friend who don't even make da'wah to my family, he said, your family is a non-Muslim. I said, who give you the right to judge my family? You don't even call them to Islam and you say they are non-Muslim. I may have the right to say they are non-Muslim. 
Because I have tried my best to call them to Islam. That I also do not judge them. I do not know. Maybe the ending part, they be, become Muslim. My mom, Alhamdulillah, three years ago before she passed away, I call her, I invite mom. Say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Say that, mom. Inshallah, if you say that, I will pray for you. And all the Muslim in the world will pray for your soul. And she said, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. This is what we cannot, we cannot give up and we cannot just judge anybody yeah, by just say because she or he is not yet a Muslim now. Call them not yet Muslim so that you know that you have a responsibility to call them to Islam. Do you know that your guests have right upon you? The Prophet said, Man kana yu'minu billahi yawmal akhir fali yukrim barakallahu feeh. A lot of brothers who learn about Islam here. That the Prophet, whoever believes in Allah and the hereafter, he or she must honor the right of the guests. Do you know that if I come to your house, I have a right to stay there three days? Three days. Free lodging. Plus free meal. Yeah, I have right. Islamically, yes. It's beautiful. If you understand the basic rights that Allah has offered to all of us, not only for Muslim, and you exercise that right, I believe people who are not yet Muslim will respect us. People who are not yet Muslim will accept the fact that Islam is the best. But because we have not been doing it as a Muslim, and that's why a lot of people are very confused. They thought that Islam is a very bad religion because of the Muslim. Like what the scholars used to say, Al-Islam mahju people muslimin. The beauty of Islam is covered by the ugly Muslims. We hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us a good Muslim, a practicing Muslim. Even we know the fact today is Talking Muslim is everywhere. Practicing Muslim is very rare. But inshallah, after tonight, we hope all of us become a good practicing Muslim. Amin. Ya Rabbil Alamin. Wa billahi tawfiqi wa aqri da'wana. Inna al-hukma illa lillahi alayhi tawakkaltu fa alayhi yatawakkalil mutawakkilun. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.